We're going to be looking today at our second vehicle electrics assessment uh, for Unit 153. Uh, this is going to cover the vehicle lighting system. We're going to be removing uh, vehicle headlights, checking it, refitting, aligning it, uh, and then we're going to be looking at the rear tail lights, taking the cluster out and performing a lights check at the back of the vehicle. Headlights are typically secured by three fixtures. Um, usually they're pretty much in the same place. We've got one at the top and one on either lower corner, creating kind of a, like a triangular effect. This particular car, uh, to access the fixtures, you have to remove this front section of the upper trim, this little strip under the headlight, and then you can access the bolts. Uh, often, uh, in today's designs, this whole front area here, all the blue that you see, is one component and you have to remove the whole front bumper assembly to access the headlight. And in some cases you have to remove the headlight to change the headlight bulb, which of course then means taking the bumper off as well. So quite an involved process, um, and then obviously having to worry about lining it back up again uh, to make sure that the vehicle is safe to be driven on the roads. You can see I've taken the trim off now, and that's now exposed the, the headlight, its fixtures, and you can now see them. There was one on the top here, uh, which I think we saw earlier. Uh, there's one just in this corner here, uh, and you can just about see where the screwdriver is here. There's the one in the corner. So I'm just going to remove those three bolts, and that will then release the headlight from the car. As you can see, the headlight now is released. It's still electrically connected, and we'll look at the connections in a second. I uh, just wanted to point out the fact that uh, as the headlight's now sat sitting forward, potentially resting on the painted bumper, I've just put a, a floor mat underneath that uh, headlight just to protect the paintwork while I remove the electrical connections on the back of the headlight. Here you can see the connection for the indicator. Uh, it's simply released by pushing down on that little bar at the top there. That will release the spring pressure and then the connector can just be pulled off. Again, as a reminder, don't pull connectors by the wires. Always make sure that you're pulled by the plastic connector block itself. The uh, headlight bulb and the headlight aligning motor will have the same connector block design as well. So there's just three to remove and then the headlight can come away from the vehicle. So here are on the main headlight connector, uh, there is the metal bar that I mentioned. You simply just push that in and hold the, the plug and give that a bit of a wiggle and that will then release. Okay, it's a, it's a securing device, a locking device that holds that connector into place. So you, you must always ensure that you release the locking device rather than just pulling and hoping for the best. As you can see, I've got the headlight off the car now. It's on the bench, but typically the you know, headlights are made of glass or plastic, easily scratched or damaged. So just to ensure you've got some kind of protection down on the bench to prevent that damage. So starting from the back here, I just thought I'd show you the, uh, the various features of the headlight. Here we've got one of the adjusters which we'll be using uh, to set the beam alignment. This is the left and right adjuster. This is the main connector block which supplies the power into the headlight assembly. We've got the headlight bulb assembly here, so in this case we've got two separate bulbs both H7s, both 55 watt, 12 volt bulbs. This one is the dip beam, this one is the main beam. At the top here we've got the side light bulb which is a 5 watt bulb. Here we've got the aligning motor, headlight leveling system. So if there's a situation where you have the back of the car loaded up and the front of the car is pointing upwards uh, to prevent blinding oncoming drivers you can actually move this motor which will tip the headlight lens inside down uh, and that will prevent blinding oncoming drivers on top is also the manual adjuster for the height and over the side here we've got the actual indicator bulb this particular indicator bulb is a little bit different push and twist and that's an amber bulb uh, with a very specific um, type of connection so that you can't put a normal clear bulb in there by mistake. Just wanted to show you how bulb is located, how you remove it and then how you check it to make sure it is a serviceable bulb. We're going to look at the dip beam bulb. It's nice and easy to remove so they've got the, the two wire connection here. Simply just 
pulls off the back of the headlight again using the clip not the uh, not the wires itself that just removes you can see now the two terminals for the for the actual headlight bulb and you can see it's retained by this metal clip at the top here you simply just push that in and release it to the side and that then just drops down out of the way headlight bulb is now released you can see it's loose it's going to take the bulb out now and show you some of the features of that bulb so this is a h7 um, it's a halogen filled bulb it's very important that you don't hold the bulb by the glass you will damage the bulb and cause it to premature fail you always hold by the metal part of the bulb um, this particular bulb has got a feature at the top here uh, this is a key so that you can only fit the bulb into the headlight bulb in one direction so look at the features of this H7 bulb uh, you can see that the, the actual bulb itself has got as I mentioned a moment ago this keyway to make sure it fits in the correct orientation you can't get it around the wrong way but also it's part of the pre-focusing system so this edge here once fitted into the headlight properly uh, and located squarely and, and flat will align the headlight bulb with the lens that's inside the headlight and give you the image uh, projected onto the road surface correctly if you're checking the headlights and the beam pattern is wrong first thing to check is the thick fitting of the bulb make sure it's actually aligned properly uh, with the pre-focusing ring and the keyway into the actual headlight itself So looking inside the bulb, you can see um, highlighted in the light just there, that kind of curly-whirly piece of wire there, that's the filament. This is a piece of resistance wire that when you pass current through, heats up to a white heat, and it's the heat given off by the bulb which we interpret as light. So it's that piece there the curly whirly filament which is the part that actually fails on a bulb this bulb looks like it's okay it's intact looks serviceable but uh, a final check will be with a multimeter which we'll do now although the multimeter wires are colored and depending on what test you're doing it's important to to put the black wire to the negative side and the red to the positive side when you were doing continuity, it really doesn't matter which way round we have. So I'm just going to prove that to you. So you can see the reading here. All I'm going to do now is take the bulb off. I'm going to turn it around and put the black wire on to the other terminal and the red on to where the black was. And again, you can see we've got the same reading. So for a simple continuity check on a bulb, it doesn't matter which way round you're checking unless it's an LED a light emitting diode bulb then it will but a normal incandescent halogen filament type bulb that we have here you can test it in either direction just wanted to show you while the headlight was off the other two bulbs in the assembly we've got the 5 watt side light bulb and we've got the orange indicator bulb which I mentioned earlier uh, so this particular bulb is a capless bulb uh, this one you can hold by the glass, in fact it's the only way to handle it and it simply just pulls out the, hand, out the uh, housing and you can see the, if I bring this closer to the camera, hopefully the camera will focus, the shiny parts are the inside of the filament um, just protruding from the glass, so no metal bottom at all and that just fits back into the housing and again that can be put in either way so it doesn't matter if it goes that way or rotates and goes in that way it will still work just push it in capless type bulb the indicator bulb is quite specific because the lens of the indicator is clear uh, we need an orange light by law for indicators uh, so consequently the bulb itself is painted this one's in quite good condition the paint's not chipped off often if you see an indicator flashing white light it's because the paint's come off the bulb uh, and that needs to be changed again this is uh, a simple change it's a bayonet fixing uh, so you push in and twist uh, the, the slight difference is the pegs are offset so they're not parallel if you see that one there and they're on the side they are offset 
Uh, they are level across the side there, but they are offset so that only that bulb will fit into this housing. As you can see the headlight is now fitted back into the vehicle. It's not secured and I haven't put the trim back on yet. What I'm going to do now is a quick lights check, make sure all the headlight functions as it should uh, before I secure it to the vehicle and finish the job off. The last thing I want to do is put everything back together and then find out something doesn't work later on. So always do an early check as quickly as you can. So I'm just going to run through the lights now. So we should have our indicator going now. Um, roughly 60 to 120 flashes a minute. That's an MOT regulation. If it's flashing quickly, then it's an indication that uh, a bulb somewhere else on that circuit is not working. Here you can see the side light coming on. Just a little 5 watt bulb at the top there. The next one is the dip beam. And on this car, the dip beam stays on when we go to high beam. And there is high beam. As you can see, the headlights now securely fitted back to the vehicle. All the trim is back together again, so the job's effectively finished. Uh, I know the headlight works properly as we did the pre-checks. Uh, the last thing that remains to do is the actual headlight alignment. Uh, although the headlight has got plastic pegs and lugs, so that when you put the headlight back into its aperture, it is located pretty accurately. Uh, it, there is just a possibility it's not you know, 100%, so we do need to do an alignment check, um, which we'll run through now. So headlights now fitted back to the vehicle, pre-tested as you saw. Uh, I've now moved the headlight aligner or the beam aligner into place. Uh, I'm just going to run through some pre-checks with it and uh, I'll describe them to you. Pre-checks on the car, uh, make sure the suspension is serviceable, uh, the ride height is equal both sides, make sure the tyres are uh, properly inflated, uh, there's no kind of weight in the vehicle sort of unevenly um, that might upset the level of the headlight and also make sure that the headlight leveling system is set to zero uh, and then you can go ahead and um, check the beam pattern. When you go to set the headlight level uh, you need to look on the headlight for the figure determined by the manufacturer. Sometimes it's on the actual glass or, or, or on the plastic of the lens. Uh, in this particular example it's on the bracket that holds the headlight onto the car and the dip setting is 1.2 percent. That then needs to be referred to the chart that tells you how to use the machine um, so you can know where you're looking. This is a representation of what you will see through the beam setter. Uh, you can see that there is a blue line here with a figure of 1.25 percent. The yellow section is the pattern of the actual bulb so you have the flat line for the dip beam and there is the kick up that illuminates the curb and the pathways. It's the 1.25% that we want as the headlight is 1.2 so ideally we end up with the cutoff line of the headlight level with the 1.25 blue line and the kick up starts in between these two dotted vertical lines and that would be a perfectly aligned beam. So now we've got the beam liner sort of set up with the vehicle. Uh, there's just a few couple of quick checks to make sure that the beam setter is kind of matched to the vehicle. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that it's square. Um, so what I've done, I've kind of preset this uh, and I'm going to use a tape measure to uh, determine that it, it's uh, totally square. So I've picked a point on the car that is equally um, symmetrical on both sides and I'll, I'll be moving across to the to the near side in a second so, and using the same point. Uh, I'm then going to take a measurement from this spot to the front of the uh, beam liner and just make sure it's the same figure for both sides. So here you can see I've got the other end of the tape now it's reading about 95 centimeters so I'm just going to roll the machine across and just check it's the same. As you can see, I've rolled the machine across to the other side of the car. It's the same measurement from the same point, so I'm now happy that that 
the machine, the beam aligner is now true and square and parallel to the front of the vehicle. Now I positioned the beam aligner directly centrally on the actual headlight. I'm using the white line at the top to line up exactly with the bulb that I can see within the actual headlight. If I just zoom in, in here, you can see the bulb in the top of the corner of the picture uh, and the, the white line is just matched up with that. The third thing to do with the aligner is to make sure it's at the right height for the headlight. So I've got it square, I've got it parallel. Now I'm just going to drop the lens down. Uh, you can just about see the light here, so you can see that it, it, it's too high at the moment. Uh, and I'm going to lower it down and you'll see it when it's correctly positioned. So you can see now that I've lowered the, the uh, beam setter. Uh, there is a notch on the frame just here and the main concentration of the headlight beam is roughly in the centre of this area here. So it's lining up quite nicely with that lens in the middle. Just make sure the lens is nice and clean, get all the dust off and then we should get a good beam pattern projected. Just need to check finally that the headlight levelling system is at zero. I'm just going to operate the motor. You'll hear it run and you should see the beam pattern rise on the projection. So as you saw from the pattern through the machine, the beam is a little bit low. So I've accessed the um, levelling system through this front bar up through the hole and um, with an allen key and that will then allow me to adjust the height of the beam on the machine and I'm just going to spin the camera around so you can see it doing that. So I need to come up to the 1.25 line which is the blue one. Hopefully that will bring me up. You can just see the pattern now lifting and I'm virtually there just about at that point there. So it's just around about there. Okay. And I'm happy there. Uh, you can see the black dot on the left hand side. That's where the kick up should start from. So the headlight at the moment is aimed a little bit more to the right than it should be. So I just need to bring it back to the left with the other adjuster, which I'll show you in a second. Here you can see I've moved the uh, headlight now to the left. Uh, and the kick up line now starts pretty much on that black dot um, so I'm happy with that. So now moving around to the back the other half of the assessment is to remove and check the rear lights of a vehicle. To access these bulbs uh, and to remove the actual lens assembly on this particular car uh, it's held in by these two uh, f fixtures here they simply just um, spin off like this Okay, and there's two of them, obviously one on the other side. That removes this panel, which accesses the bulbs, but it also releases the lens from the vehicle. So in this situation, you just have to have one hand on the lens on the outside, so that when you remove the last screw, the lens doesn't just fall off and hit the floor. So again, just quickly to show you, I've removed the outer cover. Um, the connector is very similar to the one you saw at the front. There's the multi-plug uh, and it's got the same kind of sprung bar that you need to kind of press just to release the, uh, the light from the harness. As you can see the lens is now removed from the car. You can see that the actual lens itself does create the weather seal uh, for the back of the vehicle. It's really important that the light goes back in properly otherwise this area here won't have its seal and we will start to get water ingress through here into the back of the car. It's really important that fits on properly and I'll show you the seal on the lens assembly in a minute. Here you can see the back of the lens. There's the actual weather seal. So it's really important that you check that that's intact, fitted properly and, and is in good condition. There's no holes or anything like that. To access the bulbs they live on this panel we're simply just pressing these two tags here and here and that will then release the bulb from the actual lens assembly. So just to sort of show you what's going on we have effectively a printed circuit um, we have a shared earth so every single one of these bulbs will use a shared earth and then it will have its individual supply. You can see the orange indicator again that we saw at the front of the car and then we have various other lights, fog lights, reverse lights, stop lights, tail lights and so on. I just want to show you one particular bulb uh, in detail. 
So here is that stop and tail light. You can see the two contacts at the bottom. Uh, you can see the two bayonet fixings, one there and one just there. Unlike the amber bulb I showed you at the front, these are parallel across there, but they differ because they are at different heights. So again, the, the idea is that only can be fitted in one direction. So this ensures that the brake light bulb works when you press the brake and the side light bulb comes on when you turn on the lights. Really dangerous if you get it around the wrong way because as, so, as soon as you took the um, side lights on, if this bulb is fitted back to front, the people behind will think you're braking and then when you do brake, they won't see it and you could have a rear end shunt. So to, to achieve the two different um, levels of brightness shall we say there are two filaments inside there you can just about see them in the, in the light uh, one is a 5 watt which is the side light and the other one is 21 watt which is the brighter brake light bulb testing is done in exactly the same way as I showed you for the headlight bulb you'd use a multimeter set to continuity and you just go across the bulbs checking to make sure there is a circuit through them and uh, you can also check the shared earth as well. So I'm at the point now where perhaps I've changed the bulb or I've checked the circuit or something like that uh, and I want to make sure that the bulbs and everything all work before I reassemble the lens just like I did uh, on, the, on the headlight assembly. So now I'm just going to run through a, a simple lights check on the back of the vehicle. Here you can see the indicator working so I'm quite happy with that. Here you can see the side lights working. This particular bulb has got twin rear side lights. Now you can see I press the brake pedal and you can see that the, uh, the brake light bulb on the right hand side has become brighter. That's because it's got the second filament working, the 21 watt. The last two bulbs now on the left hand side, the one at the top is the rear fog light which only comes on when you've got the headlight switched on and we have the reverse light bulb at the bottom again only happens when we go into reverse gear. So as you can see it's all back together again now. The final check uh, to do is a, an alignment check really to make sure that the fit the shut lines all look good, they're nice and even, they're the same on both sides, uh, that gap is even um, and then as you bring the tailgate down just bring the tailgate down slowly don't slam it down to start with and just make sure that it fits in nicely along here and that the, the light isn't kind of out of alignment uh, because the possibility is when you drop that down quite quickly you could end up just catching that light if you haven't got it back in properly. So that's the um, 153 vehicle lighting assessment completed, both the back and the front of the vehicle checked thoroughly, tested and uh, rebuilt.